All right. All right. All right. Hey, y'all. Welcome. It is Tuesday, June 25th, and this is week four for our four-week series, Stepping Stones for Success. I am Shana Turney, Superstar Director for Better Together Tribe of Teams. Um, this link will be shared for replays. I just want to thank y'all for being here. That's all I got. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, what have y'all, what have y'all thought so far? It's going to be kind of an interactive call. So what have y'all thought so far? Yay, nay, learn something, figured something out about yourself, figured something you want to change, improve on. Um, I'm going to start it with this little quote that life begins where fear ends. And I think a lot in this business, we hold our own selves back for fear of the unknown, for fear of failure, for fear of rejection, um, fear of what others may think of us and how they may perceive us when it comes to us promoting ourselves and our business. Um, week one, we started with stories. We had different consultants share a few minutes of their, share a few minutes of their story. Um, stories can be powerful. Stories are relatable. Stories build connections and stories build relationships. This is a relationship based business. Everything we do is geared on the relationships that we have with our customers and the relationships that we have with our team. Um, how many of you did your homework for week one and shared your story on social media? Girl, I see you shaking your hand. I'll drive down to your house, make you share that story. Um, week two, we heard from Desi, which she is absolutely amazing. If you did not, um, if you did not watch it, I suggest going back and watching the replay. Um, she talked to us about self-awareness, self-doubt, and then I ended it with, why are you here? And your vision. I asked you all to make a vision board of some sort because in this business and just life itself, when you have goals for yourself or in your business, if you don't have a vision on why you're doing it, then you don't really know how to move forward. You know what I mean? It kind of keeps you, um, sorry, it kind of, can make you feel stuck because you don't really know which direction to go. Um, but I think Desi's topic hit on a lot of what everyone feels all the time. Um, Self-doubt, it creeps in all the time. When you set your, set a goal for yourself and you end up not reaching it or I don't know what, whatever the reason may be, you start to doubt yourself, right? You start to doubt, like, am I even made for this? Am I cut out for this? Am I supposed to be doing this? Like, I'm not, I don't understand. And this just, this all relates to life, not just in business, but also self-awareness. If you're not aware of your own actions and things that you've done, um, when it comes to business or things that you haven't done and you're able to self-reflect and be like, maybe I really wasn't as into it as I thought I was. Um, so I asked you all to make a vision board to kind of put yourself, have a visual for what you want for your business. Who did that? Who made a vision board, whether it was a digital or old fashioned on a poster board? If you didn't, I highly encourage you to go make one. If you already have one, reevaluate it and see if there's anything you need to take off or anything that you need to add to it. And then week three, 
I think was a really important week. Um, it was kind of a different call. I did a screen recording from, from someone else's call because I just love what that leader had to say. And I love how she broke down her six month business plan. And I gave you guys the Canva link on, um, on the tribe page to make a six month plan to really map out what you want for not necessarily what you, what you want for your business, but how you, what you need to do to achieve it. Cause you have your vision, you know what you want. Now you need to make that plan. You need that action plan. So you know what steps to take each month to get you closer to that six month goal. Who made, who made their vision plan? I know Courtney did because she sent it to me. Anybody else? Why not? I'm still working on mine. You didn't make it. Why? Why? Why didn't you? I'll do full transparency. I'm a leader, and I even messed up, and I forgot last week's call for whatever reason. I almost forgot tonight, but I just jumped on. So I'm gonna do mine tonight. I'm gonna hold myself accountable. It will be in the group before you go to bed tonight. <laughs> I'm just wondering. It's some I'm trying to figure out how to put this into words. I think it's one of those things where. All of this other stuff that we've talked about for the last three, last two weeks, not including last week, comes into play where you saw that plan of someone else. Maybe you compared and be like, oh, I can't do 2,500 PRB. I can't do the coaching calls. I can't get this many. I'm not going to have that many um, promotions. No one's going to join my team. Did you say that to yourself? Because if you said that to yourself, that 100% is why you didn't make your vision plan. I mean, your, not your vision plan, your six month plan. So if that's you and it's okay, if it is, it's okay, if it is, because it's overwhelming. And sometimes the big goals that we set for ourselves are pretty scary. They're pretty scary. And then when that doubt does creep in, it keeps us from moving forward. And then you have life circumstances that throw, that throw things your way. Um, whatever you have going on in life could also be keeping you from doing what you need to in business It all. It, it truly all starts up here. Um, the day you stop growing is the day that you start dying. I think a lot of us also stop learning. We stop taking initiative to improve ourselves, which comes with personal development. If you don't do some sort of personal development, I encourage you to, um, to incorporate it in your life. And on the days that you don't want to, or the days that you need to do it the most. And I, I'm just going to say like, you know, you know, my son, he's 17. He's an athlete. He loves basketball. He had maybe a week off between the, the last day of school and when summer workouts started. And every day this summer, they work out four days a week. Every day this summer, he's up at 6.15 and he's at school by seven. Every morning. They get four passes every summer. I mean, at, they get four pass. I don't know why I said every summer. He ain't never worked out at this school before. Um, they get four passes during the summer. If something comes up or whatever. He's already used to on BS excuses just because he didn't feel like it. Um, I had a, my husband has a, he has his own business, but he also got a really good job and he has a take home truck and it, the truck was at, was at work. So I drove him to work this morning at five o'clock in the morning, five 30 in the morning. I told Braxton, I said, you need to make sure that you're up at six 15, like set your alarm. I checked on him before we left. We actually left at 5.15 because I told him, I said, you have one hour, make sure your alarm set. I got home, got back home at 6.20 and he's still in the bed. I was like, hey, bub, you need to get up. It's time to go, time to get up. And he goes, uh, uh And I was like, oh, great. It's like trying to wake a five-year-old up for kindergarten. And I left him alone for a few minutes. And I was like, hey, you've got to get up or you're going to be late. We, we live about 20 minutes from his school. I said, you need to get up. And he kept telling me no. And I finally went back there and I said, 
excuse me if you have little kids listen I was like you need to get your fucking ass up that's what I told him excuse me but I did I said get up and he said I don't really want to go today I said well today's the day that you need to go the most so I made him get up and <laughs> I was sitting in the living room and he walked through and I said have I um said I love you and he goes you're no fun I was like okay he gets he gets to the car and he is in the car maybe like oh he went to go shut the door and I said leave the door open like I just wanted the door open well he shuts the door I was like okay so I just get up and I open the door by the time I opened the door and I got back to the couch he had already texted me and he just said no fun <laughs> and I was like it's okay I said Today's the day that you need to do it the most. The days that you don't want to get up and the days that you don't want to work your business or do something around your house or go for, go for a walk or whatever it may be, those are the days that you need to do it the most because those are the days that you are on the verge of either a burnout or you're on the verge of a, I just want to give up and I don't want to do this. You have to remember your why. That's why... That's why we talk about your why so often. Because on the hard days, you're going to, and you, when you have that vision and when you have that plan in place, you're already going to know what to do. It's just going to come naturally. When you build those daily habits, that motivation is going to come whether you want to be there or not. Okay. If you are feeling stuck, which a lot of us feel stuck often, and I feel like it's a big season of people feeling stuck within their business, um, you really have to self-reflect and ask yourself, how can I do it differently? Not necessarily how can I do it better, but what can I do different? And this all relates back to the self-reflection and self-awareness and asking yourself the hard questions. What's been working? What hasn't been working? And the most important question is what action steps have I actually taken to get the results that I want? And if you are honest with yourself, you can be like, eh, well, I've really not been talking to that many people about joining my team. Let me revisit my dream team list and, um, Make, make a new plan, make a different plan, okay? Am I doing the NRAs? I know we've always talked about IPAs, income producing activities. I don't really like that anymore. I like the NRAs. Do you know what NRA, have we talked about this before? Maybe briefly, NRA, necessary required actions. What are the necessary required actions that you need to take for yourself in your business to produce the income that you want or to produce the results that you want? Like you have to really get vulnerable and ask yourself, have I really been doing all the things that I said I'm doing? No one wants to party with me. No one wants to place an order. No one wants to join. No one wants to this. No one wants to that. Well, how many people have you asked? How many people have you followed up with? Are you consistent on social media? Are you consistent? I mean, just with anything in your business. And if you're not, you need to see how you can do things differently. Um, another thing that I really want to touch on, and I kind of touched on it a little bit last week or the week before, I can't remember is your circle of influence. Your circle of influence matters 1 million percent. It will affect you in real life and it will affect you in business. It's not necessarily the people, just, it's not just the people that you hang out with, but it's what do you listen to on a daily basis? What do you watch on a daily basis? What do you read? And most importantly, what do you say to yourself every single day? You're your, you're, I mean, like you're part of your own circle of, of, sorry to say circle of excellence, your circle of influence. 
you're part of that. What you tell yourself every single day matters. If you tell yourself that you're not good enough, guess what? You ain't going to be good enough because you've said it to yourself enough that you're going to believe it. When everything happened in not necessarily just 2020, but um, in general, I don't watch the news. You'll never catch me watching the news unless my husband has it on. And in that case, I ain't paying attention to it because that brings me down. I'm an empath and I feel deeply and it brings me down and I don't want to feel it. We've had to tell my father-in-law like, Pops, you've got to quit watching the fake news and all the things because it puts you in a bad mood because it's nothing but garbage and trash. Is it not? Why you don't want to fill your mind with that. If you are down in the dumps and I know music, I love music to my core and it is an amazing outlet. But if you're in a dumpy mood and you're listening to super sad songs, or if you're in a pissed off mood and you're listening to a bunch of heavy metal or whatever it may be, it's going to intensify your mood. It's going to either make you more depressed or it's going to piss you off even more. Listen to something happy. Listen to something that gets your blood flowing. Set yourself up for success by making sure that your circle of influence is positive. There was a point in my Sensi journey, and I'm just going to say it again. I know some of y'all may have heard it last week or whatever week I talked about it, where I wanted to quit my job. My husband gave me the okay to quit my job at the county after 10 and a half years. And I talked to someone, supposed to have been a friend in my upline, and she knew our past financial, I guess, struggles, if you will. And she basically told me that I can't afford to quit my job because I'm not a director. I'm just a superstar consultant. Okay. And it really brought me down. And I was like, well, maybe you're right. Maybe I shouldn't. And I started, I was already nervous. Like that's an, that's a nerve wracking thing to put your guaranteed every two week income to go sell Cincy and knowing that your commission checks are always going to be different not having your insurance, not having all the added benefits that you may get from having that nine to five job. So I took a huge leap of faith and I sat on that letter for like 30 days before I turned in my resignation letter. We were coming up on the week before Braxton started middle school and I'd always been able to take my daughter and take, uh, take Braxton to school because they started, elementary started at 745, but middle school started at 815. Well, I've got to be to work at eight o'clock, 45 minutes away. So there's no way I could have taken him to school. And I missed out on so much with my daughter from working. Now I have this opportunity and I have someone in my ear saying, you're just a superstar consultant. You're a seasonal director. You can't quit. You're never, you're never going to it's not going to work. Your team's not big enough. I think we had a team of like 25 people at the time. And I'd already been a director and I lost my title. That's what she meant by seasonal director. Um, I knew Shauna. I met her in 2016 at Nashville SFR. Started following her. I'm like, I kind of like her vibe. I love her hustle. I love her drive. I want to get to know this girl. So I kind of leached on. Um, and I messaged her literally out of faith because I'm not, I had at that point, I'd not really had like a one on one conversation with her. And I said, Hey, Jason said I could quit my job, but so and so told me that all the reasons why I shouldn't. I just have some questions for you. So she told me to call her on my way home one day. And I talked to her for 45 minutes on the way home. And she told me all the reasons why I, not necessarily that I should quit, but why I could and why it would work out if I really put my heart and soul into it. 
so that was on like a Wednesday or Thursday. Braxton started school that following Monday. Or it was the, the it was the week before. I only gave him like a week and a half. And I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And I turned it in. And I said, this is my last day. And they said, can you give us another month? so we can fill your position. And I was like, with all due respect, the entire time y'all have been in office, you've never filled a position in less than three months. No. I said, Braxton starts middle school on, I remember, I don't know why I remember this date. It was August 18th, 2018. I said, he starts and I'm going to be there to drop him off and I'm going to be there to pick him up. So I turned it in and I never looked back. That same very month I got, we um got our director title back and I never lost it again never lost it again and I'm very proud of that um because I came home and I made a new plan and I worked with Shauna and I thought about it and I was like I knew that I needed to pay the electric bill and I needed to pay the water bill that's all that's that was our that was our agreement my husband said, you pay these two bills and I will cover the rest. You just work on getting it to where you think you can or what we know you can. And now I'll pay all our household bills and a car payment and other things. And it wasn't because it wasn't, what am I trying to say? I just had a brain fart. Um, it was because I had a very strong why, because now if I don't make this work, we're, I'm, I can't pay the light bill. I can't pay the water. I wanted to be able to give Braxton everything that he needed for basketball when it comes to basketball lessons or new shoes or AAU teams or traveling or whatever it may be. I wanted to be able to provide that and say that I did it with my Cincy money. That was a huge, huge deal for me. So every, anything that ever comes that he gets for basketball, I've paid for by work in my Cincy business because I had someone believe in me that gave me the belief in myself to change my mindset, to change my leadership styles, to change how I showed up every single day. And I am constantly evolving. I never want to be the smartest person or the richest person in the room. I want to be the dumbest, poor, poorest person in the room so I can learn from those who have been where I want to be. Those are the people that you want to surround yourself with. And if you are not surrounding yourself with those kinds of people, you need to reevaluate who you hang out with, who you live with, who you talk to on a daily basis, what you listen to on a daily basis. You need to reevaluate that because you're worth more than that. I know every single person here is capable of so much more than what you're doing. And this includes myself. We are capable to do more, to be more. And if you want to success, to be successful in this business, you just have to ask yourself, why am I here? You have to figure out what your vision is. You have to make yourself a six month plan. So if you didn't make a six month plan, I want you to ask yourself now, why haven't I done it? Why haven't I made that six month plan? Why haven't I put something in place? When am I going to do that? And when am I going to implement it? Last week would be an ideal answer, but hey, I'm not you. Um, just kidding. I love y'all, but you know what I'm saying? Like you have to be able to ask yourself the hard questions. If nothing is working in your business, you have to ask yourself why you have to ask yourself, what have I done? What have I not done? What can I do different? It's never about what can I do better? It's never about what she's doing next door or she's doing in your upline or your downline. I don't give a damn what anybody's doing. I care about what you're doing. I care about what I'm doing. I'm not comparing myself to the consultant down the road who earned something when I didn't or who got more recruits this month and I didn't. I'm not worrying with that because you know why? 
that shit ain't paying my bills. Okay? It ain't paying my bills. So I'm not worried about what you're doing or what you're not doing within your business. I'm worried about what's in my lane and focusing on that. And if you choose to focus on something else, that's on you. But if you come to me for help, I'm going to ask you, well, what have you been doing? And you have to really get down to the nitty gritty. And are you really doing that? Or are you just saying, I'm posting on social media? Well, how many times? Let me go take a look at your social media. I see one post in five days. Yeah, nobody saw that post. Nobody saw it. Nobody saw it. You have 25 customers from, from the month of May. Have you followed up with them? Did you say thank you? Have you have you done Happy Mail? And Happy Mail doesn't have to be something tangible that you spend money on and mail out. It can be that you've created a cute little image with you and your family on there and you've sent them a text or you sent them a voice clip or you sent it in a voicemail, something to let them know that you appreciate them. That's going to build the connections. That's going to build the relationships that you want in this business. So you have to, you just have to be honest with yourself. What have you really done and what have you not done? Um, so I'm going to open it up. Is there anyone that's willing to share their six month plan or share like an aha self-reflection moment from the past three weeks from the program, something you didn't know, but now you know, or something that you've implemented, but you didn't implement, something you learned about yourself. I'll share my six month plan and what I'm doing to help me plan for that plan. Um, <clears throat> it took me a minute to get mine together because I did a lot of, I know I can do this. Why are you not doing it now? I did a lot of reflecting of when I hit director and why I'm not director now. And so I went back to the months that I was director and I did have high PRV and looked at what I was doing and what I was not doing. And I simply implemented it into the month and I grew them. Um, what I put on mine, would look it's going to look different for everybody but I did um my PRV goal a party goal a new customer goal a goal to share Cincy Club um a recruit goal and a active frontline goal and I did that from I started mine in July and went through to December I kept it the same for July and August <clears throat> And then I moved it up in September and October, and then I moved it up again. And when I say moved it up, I added more parties, more PRV, more recruits, more active frontline every two months. Because I know when I make it to December, my goal is to hit director again by November. When I make it to December, these numbers are going to be half of what I'm doing. Because I'm, I'm looking to go from four parties a month to six parties a month. And I know... For some, that might sound like a lot <clears throat> um, because you often hear two parties a month to this, to this, to this. I do push for more because there's going to be people that back out. There are going to be parties that flop. There are going to be um, parties that just don't happen. And if your goal is for two and you have two flop, you have zero and you're right back starting over. What I did once I decided on what I wanted my goals to look like for that six months, and I'm not completely finished, but I just took my old trusty notebook and I wrote down the month. And then I added, I wrote all those same goals again. And then I put specifically, I wanted to have four parties in July. I put party host one, two, three, four. And then I went to my customers. I went to people that I wanted to host for me. And I've started plugging those names in. I've already got those yeses. I've already, even if I haven't spoke to them and I know that I want Sally down the street to host a party, I put it in there and I specifically told Shana, I'm manifesting that all of these people are going to tell me yes. I'm manifesting that this is the new customer that I want and I'm writing her name down. 
even if I have not spoken to her. This is a new teammate that I want, and I'm writing her name down because she's going to be on my team. I got um, complacent of where I was and quit doing the things that I knew I needed to be doing. But once I started with my plan and then I went into planning that plan, I have went as far as printed my whole team out. I have got together who's working, who's not working, who's fixing to fall off, who's fixing to roll up, who's all the things within my team. I've done the same thing with my customers and I plan to plug and play that into my six months. And where there are holes, I'm going to go find those new people and continue to hopefully after December, my plan after December, the six months is to start that whole six months over and make it bigger, continue to make it bigger until I get to where I want to be. It's a, it's a lot of, I will tell you this, it's, it's easy to take a, a sheet that has all the goals on it and just plug numbers in that you think somebody wants you to do. It's real easy for you to say, well, what are your goals? Well, X, Y, and Z. Okay, but how do you plan to hit those goals? That's the plan. Anybody can write down goals. Anybody can say, I would love to have $2,000 in PRV. Okay, well, how are you going to get that? And that's where all of the things come together and they make a pretty cake and then you get to put a cherry on top. So um, if you have not done your six month plan, my suggestion is to plan your plan to plan your plan. Manifest it, write it down, do it. Because once I did, I'm like, oh, I've done that before. I've done that before. So let's add a few more parties. Let's add a few more teammates because I've already done that. I know I can do that. I've just got to do the things to get there. Go plan your plan. Plan your plan to plan your plan. Yes. On another reason that it's good to double your numbers in like October, November and all of that, that's our busiest time of year. So your sales usually are higher those months anyway. And in August, we should be in a trip incentive. So you're going to want all the points. So ev everyone should be shooting for double what they usually do in those months. And I did, I did on my months that I did on here, I put important things that were happening. SFR, new catalog, when I want to hit director, when our trans transition month is, I put all that in there. So I could look at that and say, I know we have a new catalog. That was my biggest ever since being with Cincy. Pre-order was going into fall and winter. So I was already, I already got that prepared in there. So the, the catalogs are, um, they've changed. So the spring one is in March now and the fall one's in September. Yeah. Just for people here, old and new, just because I was thinking about it the other day and had to refresh myself because it's still pretty new. Me. <clears throat> yeah, I like the plan, the plan. Plan your plan to plan your plan. It's one of those things where like in, I'm so glad that Courtney, I'm so glad that you said this because what you're writing on your six month plan, do it to what you want and need for yourself. Don't do it to what you think I want to see. Cause I don't want to see what you think I need to see. I want to see what you think you need to see and what you need to do. And it's, and this is one of those things where you're writing your goals down, but like Courtney ran reports for her downline. She did this. She did that. She's making the plans for what her goals are. You're just writing your goals down. Now you have to go and like, you have to take it a step further and write these plans. How are you going to get the PRV every single month? How much of that is going to come from parties? How much is going to come from random PWS orders? How much is going to come from recurring customers just from doing follow-ups? What, how much is coming from club? And if you don't already know this, you can log in to your workstation, go to your commission history, and it will break everything down on how you're getting your orders. It's a little colored wheel. And it shows you where your, P where your PRV is coming from. If you've never broken down your commission history, I, I encourage you to do it so you know where your stuff's coming from. If you are a leader and you are being paid at, paid at title and or earning any of your leadership bonuses, you need to go look at that as well to find out where your leaders stand. Where they used to be, where are they now? 
What do you as their leader need to do to help coach them? This business, we're here to either make a buck or to be a part of the community or buy from ourselves, whatever. If you're on a training, it's because you want a little bit more than just making orders for yourself. You want to try to make something bring generate a little bit of extra income for yourself every single month or you're here to try to build it big we're all here for different reasons so you need to identify why you are here but you have to know where is your income coming from that's the most important thing and what i don't feel like a lot of people understand is one the compensation plan but two we are here for ourselves we can make that extra money but we have to operate on an arrows out mentality. And if you are a leader, you have to help your team. And pardon me for saying this, but you got to give a shit about your team. You have to show up. You have to show up and you have to help people. They're not here for you. They're not here so you can earn the incentive. They're not here so you can earn annual mentor. They're here. So they can accomplish whatever desired goals that they want for themselves. Whatever their level, desired level of success is what you need to learn, what you need to figure out. That helps you help them and in turn helps you. And until you can figure out the arrows out mentality instead of the arrows in, you're just going to be stuck like Chuck for a very long time. That's another training for another day. I'm just going to get off of that. But I do encourage you to go to your commission history and see where your income is coming from. Are you being paid at title if you are a leader above? If you're not, why not? We need to we need to figure that out. We need to make a, a, a personal plan and we need to make a team plan. And Courtney, I'm probably going to schedule a coaching call with you because I need you to coach me on all the things that you just did. Okay. I may have been here 10 years, but it doesn't mean I know it all. Doesn't mean that I can't improve on what I'm doing. I want to grow too. So I have to implement new things as well. Okay. That's just part of self-reflection. There are things that I could do more. There are things that I honestly, I could do better. Um, anybody else want to share? Anybody else brave enough? I'm about to just call on somebody. Let me read these. Um, I'm trying to catch up on these comments. Can we get a list of the incentive goals? We won't know, Stephanie. I think it was already answered, but we won't know until um, the incentive actually starts. Um, at SFR, we find out where the location of the next incentive trip is. And then we don't know until August 1st when the incentive period starts. Granted, they started again in August. They usually do. One year, we ran it from September to February. That was a little weird, but is what it is. I don't make the rules. I just show up. Um, but we will have, we absolutely will have an incentive plan meeting. And then if anyone needs a coaching call to help make an incentive plan, and incentives are not easy to earn. I'm just gonna say it. They're not easy. It takes a lot of takes a lot of grit, determination. It takes a lot of my my plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G didn't work. So I'm gonna move on to the next letter of the alphabet and work on a different plan. It's never about what's that, what is that quote? Um I don't know. I can't think of what it is. Maybe I'll think. If you're oh, like, never change your end goal, just like change your plan. I mean, don't, don't give up. And I see too many people with so much potential just giving up or not showing up to their full potential, probably because they have self-doubt or because they're comparing to the next person. You have to be in a constant state of growth, not just in life, but in this business. If you want to be the 1%, you have to do what 99% of everyone else won't do. 
when we were at summit last year, superstar director summit, um, was it, or was it leadership? I think it was leadership for SFR. It was one of the two. I can't remember. We heard from a speaker. Don't ask me. I can't remember who it is, but he says when he is out, he never takes the escalator. You know, you've got up escalator, down escalator, and then you got stairs in the middle. He always takes the stairs. Why? What, Courtney? There's not as many people. There's not as many people. 1% of people are going to take the stairs. 1% of people are going to do what the 99% of other people aren't willing to do. So take the stairs. Take the stairs. Next time you see escalators and stairs, I encourage you to take the stairs. Sometimes you're physically unable to, and I understand that. Like, I, I get that. Amy, you take the escalator or you take the elevator. We ain't, we're not doing the stairs with you, okay? If you are physically incapable of doing it, take the escalator. But metaphorically, take the stairs. Metaphorically, take the stairs with everything in life. If you aren't willing to take the stairs, how do you think you're going to get to the next level? Social media is a smoke and mirror. It makes things look so easy. It, I, and I'm, I'm not going to say her name, but I, I'm going to one of my Cincy friends. She's a leader. She is always on social media. Always on social media, sharing Cincy, sharing her personal life, sharing funny memes or jokes or whatever it may be. Constantly sharing about everything. Loves this business, shares all about it. But she's been going through some really hard times. And I messaged her today about something. And her reply was, girl, I've been in the hospital for the last week. And I was like, what? I would have never known. Literally would have never known, literally would have never known that she had a kidney infection, that she was battling E. coli from the incentive trip. And she's been running 103 fever, but somehow she still managed to share family stuff, share Cincy stuff. Her house is in shambles right now because they had a flood on one of their levels. I would have never known that either until we had a conversation and she told me. Would have never known that half their house was torn up because it flooded. But she still showed up. So what you see on social media is not what you see in real life. You don't know what's going on. You don't, you don't, you just, you just don't know. Y'all would never know that I really, I feel really bad right now. Like literally was almost in tears right before I got on this call. I had to take a nap this afternoon because I felt so bad. Because I'm having some sort of lupus flare up and I'm, this is new to me and I'm still trying to figure it out. Like nobody would have ever known. You would have never known, would you? It's one of those things where. I knew I had to show up. I knew I needed to do what I said I would do and be here for you guys, regardless of how I felt. Because I told you I would. You have to be accountable to yourself. If you say you're going to show up, don't show up for me. You got to show up for you. Because you are what matter. You are what matter. Your vision matters. Your goal matters. Your life matters. How you feel matters. You have to be willing to do that for yourself. So are you going to take the stairs? Or are you going to take the escalator? I want, you to, I want you to think about that. Every time you come to a crossroad or every time you come to something hard, I want you to think, am I going to take the easy way? Or, or am I going to get real with myself and be, is this what I want? I'm trying to rebuild here. I'm not going to cancel. I could have canceled. I could have. 
But if I want to get where I want to be, I have to push some things to the side and I just have to show up and do it. I just have to show up and do it. So if you want something in this business bad enough, are you going to take the stairs? Are you going to take the escalator? Are you going to show up or are you, are you not? Don't worry about what you see homegirl doing on, on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or inner stories. Don't worry about all that because you're just seeing a small snippet of what happened in that person's day. They could be the most happiest, go lucky person on social media and the most miserable person in real life. Yeah. So also just kind of like be true and authentic to yourself. It goes back to sharing your story and um, just really knowing who you are, like who you are on social media is who you should be in real life. I know it's kind of going all over the place, but I think all of this stuff ties in to real life. People order and people join and your teammates and your customers continue to show up for you. And essentially they will show up for those that they know, like, and trust. They're going to order from those that they know that they like, and they trust. Your team is going to join who they know, like, and trust. Your team is going to show up for who they know, like, and trust. They're going to show up for who they know, know, like, and trust. So who you are on social media, make sure that you are that person in real life. Because if you're doing one thing, but people know you in real life, they're going to be like, I ain't order from that girl. No way I would join that girl's team. There's no way. Just always try to be authentic to yourself. And stop comparing. Because I know, I know we do it. I do it too. I did it to yesterday or today. I can't remember. I was having a conversation with Shauna. Hell, probably today we sent like 35 voice <laughs> clips in a span of two minutes. Um I was comparing myself to someone else on wasn't even sensey related she was like stop like why are you doing that you're like y'all don't even live the same kind of life like not you know what i mean <laughs> we're all different we all have different backgrounds we all have different families we all have different circumstances you don't know you don't know the blood blood sweat and tears that some people have poured into their business because you just see the happy go lucky reels on Facebook or TikTok. You don't see the tears and everything behind the scenes. You don't see the person feeling like complete crap. You don't, you just don't see it. You don't see it. So I want you to just remember if you haven't shared your story, go share your story. Whether you've been here for a day or you've been here for 35 days or you've used to be here and you came back 10 years later, your story matters. Everybody has a story. Everybody has something valuable to offer to somebody else. And it doesn't matter if you're getting the likes or the comments or the follower, the follower count that you want, somebody's watching you and you are an inspiration to somebody. Somebody out there says, Victoria inspires me. And I want to be like her. I want to do what she does. Someone out there saying, I've seen what Gina's done in her business in this short amount of time. I want to be like her. Like, I'm going to go hit that girl up, place an order to support her. Maybe one day I might get brave enough to join her. People are going to see Amanda at home being a single parent right now with three kids with a set of twins. I'd be pulling my hair out. Still <laughs> showing up. Still working her business. She's an inspiration to somebody. Misty's an inspiration to somebody. Amy, and Amy is a huge inspiration to me, and she has since the day I learned her story. If you don't know Amy's story, I encourage you to get to know Amy a little bit better. Everybody deserves an Amy in their life. Nicole has an inspirational story. Nicole's a fighter. If you don't know that about Nicole, you need to go I say follow her after I've done talked about all that stuff. Just follow her to learn her story. Don't follow to compare, follow to learn, follow to build the connections. That's how you get great in this business. Building the connections, being authentic, sharing your story, share what this business has done to you, share what you feel when you're on the calls, 
share what it feels like when you hit that goal, just share your story because it will be an inspiration to somebody. And it should be an inspiration to yourself as well. Everybody has a story. Every buddy has someone that is secretly following and wanting what you have right now in this moment. We should all be in the habit of the self-awareness, the self-reflection. How can I do it differently? It's never about how you can do it better. It's how you can do it different. Um, but you have to, it. Self-reflection is hard. It mm -hmm. is hard. Because you have to get real with yourself. And if you're not real with yourself, you cannot be real with anybody else. That's just the plain, hard, cold truth about it. If you can't be real with yourself, you cannot be real with anybody else. We're all here for different reasons. We're all here for a different, we all have different desired levels of success. So we're going to work our businesses differently. We're all going to show up and work our businesses differently. Hopefully we're all showing up, but we're definitely all going to work our businesses differently. And the last step is just knowing your why is going to help you put your plan in place and it's going to help you show up. You have to know why you're doing it before you can know how to do it. You have to know why before you can know how. And if you don't know why, you need to really evaluate and figure out why you're here. Is there anybody else that has anything they want to say or share? No, I don't really have, I don't have any homework for tonight. It was just kind of a closing, kind of a, let's just talk about everything over the last four weeks. I really didn't have a whole lot of notes, so I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, and I didn't ramble too much. Um, I just want to see everybody successful. Like it really makes me happy when I see you guys showing up. When I see you interacting on the team page, when I see you showing up to training for those that are local and were able to make it to the flower party, you have no idea that just made my entire month. And those that are able to go to SFR, I cannot wait to see you. And Misty, Amber, and Courtney, Amber Mitchell, and Courtney and I, um, we're all going to SFR, but we're all getting together this weekend to work on some leadership stuff for those um, going to be in person. And if you're just doing virtually, I'm working on something individually, and I'll be sending that out to all of you guys as well, um, because I believe you do have to invest a little in yourself. Um, I mean, business owner, however you wanna look at it, we operate under Cincy's umbrella, but we're still in charge. We're independent consultants. We're still in charge of our business, if that's what you wanna call it. Business owners invest in their business. I'm not saying that you need to have money to make money, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to have the will and the determination to make something of what you want for your business. It's, it's up to you and you alone. I can give you all the advice, but it's up to you to what you do with that. It's up to you to what you do with the 15,000 YouTube videos that you've watched. If you're not implementing things, it doesn't matter what you're watching. You need less ideas and more connections. That's what you need. Everybody needs less ideas, more connections. Stop worrying about the fancy parties. Stop worrying about the fancy flyers and all the things for the happy mail that you think you need to do and just do the damn work. Just take the stairs and just do it. Quit trying to implement everybody's ideas. Build the connections because the connections and the relationships are going to build yourself and they're going to build your business. That's what you have to focus on. That's what you need to focus on. That's what you need for this business. It can't be anything that I do. You have to be the ones that are willing to be the 1%, take the stairs and put in the work and just make the ish happen. It's hard. It's not, nothing about it is ever easy. And you're going to want to quit. 
you're going to want to quit. I've quit in my head a million times over the last 10 years. I'm not afraid to say that because I got in my feels, things weren't working how I wanted or something happened. I'm like, I don't want to do this. I'm not cut out for this. I am cut out for this. I am made for this. I am made for this. And I think I'm a dang good leader. I think that. So really what I think is really all that matters. Okay. That's really all that matters. What I think and what I tell myself, that's going to keep you going from day to day. Okay. So I've actually been reading this book before I joined. I would have probably never read a book like this, never listened to a podcast, never done all that self-help. Hoorah, I'm made for more. I'm capable, all that stuff. That was not me when I joined. It was not me, but it is now because it works. Okay. So this book is called The Energy Bus. And everyone, when I snap the picture, I've already written name, some names down, but if you are in the picture, I'm going to enter you into a drawing for this book and I'll, I'll just Amazon drop ship it right to the winner. And as soon as we get off here, I'm going to take just a short break because I need to get out of this chair because I just need to get out of this chair. Um, but give me a little bit. I may do it in the morning. Uh, let's, I'll just do it in the morning. Okay. I don't want to overcommit myself tonight. Um, I'll do this drawing in the morning. I'll get the recording uploaded in the morning. If you didn't do all of your homework, I just want you to ask yourself why you haven't done it. What's holding you back? Send me a message. If you're scared about something, I'm working on getting my coaching call link. Um, I had to restart it. I have to restart the whole thing. So, um, I'm working on getting all of that back up and I will share that on the team page and at everyone. Um, if you need a coaching call, set up a coaching call. We will do a coaching call. If you just want to shoot me a message on, if you need help with something, just let me know. Like I'm, I'm literally here for you guys. I don't know that you need help unless you ask me. I don't know that you have a problem with me unless you tell me. I don't know that you need something unless you tell me. Okay. We have a lot of people in the tribe. I have a lot of frontline. I can't possibly keep everything perfectly straight all my ducks in a row that's just not me it won't ever happen so if you need something you have to let me know or you, your sponsor or whoever your director is but I'm always here for you guys um so if you want your face to be shown uncover it really quick let me clean my camera there's a really bad glare I'm sorry I'm sorry Make sure I can see everybody's names. Okay. One, two, cheese. Okay. I literally am, look the same in every single picture. It never fails. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your evening um, to wrap up Stepping Stones for Success. I hope it was a valuable program for you. I hope you got something from it. All of the recordings, all the links, all the things are listed in the guides at the top of the Better Together Tribe page. If you need to do a replay, everything is there. And I will see you guys on the next training. Bye.